Coming up on BYU Basketball with Mark Pope, the boys are back from the Bahamas, basking in the glow of a comeback win versus Dayton and a three-for-all in Salt Lake City. Coach Pope is here and Fuseni Traore next on BYU TV. This is BYU Basketball with Mark Pope, presented by Siegfried and Jensen. And now, your host, the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. All right, yes, it's good to have you all here. Good evening once again, Cougar Nation. We are back, and we are live on the BYU TV and BYU Radio apps, wherever and however you're connected tonight. Great to have you with us inside Studio C and watching and listening. We are in the BYU Broadcasting Building in Provo, Utah tonight and every week. For those of us joining us live, you're always invited to use the Opine Instant Polling app. Just download the app and then watch the side of the screen for poll questions throughout the show. And a reminder to include our social media hashtag, hashtag Pope Show, in all your social media doings tonight. Coming up on this evening's broadcast, we will look back at some games BYU played since we last visited with Coach Pope here in Studio C. Jackson Robinson will be in the film room with Jerem Jordan. We'll look ahead to Saturday's showdown with South Dakota in Salt Lake City. Fuseni Traore will be our live in-studio guest. We've got a Q&A segment for the coach and Fus and some fun movie trivia as well for those two. And we'll have a BYU Hoops trivia question to end the program as well. It's been actually two weeks and a day since we last had him on set, and he's logged a few miles since then. Let's bring him back to get tonight's show underway. Say hello to the head coach of the Cougars. He is, of course, Mark Pope. Oh, my gosh. This is always good. Yeah. This is always yes. good. When the coach has stuff, it's a good thing. Hello. I have to chat at our tables. What's that? How we are got, you? We got it. They're, 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 pretty, they're pretty sturdy. Yeah. Of course, we don't want to mess with the mugs, the new mugs, which are awesome. See, I had to test out the tables. They're new, and that's amazing. Okay, we have, we have balloon action, and we have crumble cookies, and we have a 26? Yes, 26. we do. 26. 26, baby. Signifying? Come on, it's 20. So you guys know this, Greg Rubel just completed his full 25th season <laughs> as the voice of the Cougs. He's, we didn't do 25 because we're always looking towards the future. Yeah. <laughs> I know awesome. how he made it. I don't know how Tana made it through. Yeah, so this is, this is season 26. This is season 26. 26, can you imagine? Yeah, Mark Have you Durant. done a count on how many... On how many games you've done? I, you know, I, I used to count sometimes. I used to have like a, but I stopped counting, and I got I got to recount at some point, figure out what I'm doing. And mostly, yeah. my job on this show is just to annoy Greg as much as possible. <laughs> so these balloons postured right there, where we can't see each other, is just perfect. It's very thoughtful of you. I, you know, I didn't think about that. You know, twenty. What's twenty six? Like it's different when it's like one fifty. Like say you've just won your one hundred fiftieth game, for example. Yes. Uh, yeah. well, that, that's that's a different deal altogether. That's a milestone. So, so it's his 26, starting his 26th year. It's 26th season with Mark Durant. And yeah. you do all men's basketball. You've done men's basketball yeah. for 25 years. Yeah, Mark full, and I are on our 26th. It's my 27th. If you, if you take out the half season Mark and I didn't do together, yeah. like, I don't almost don't count yeah. that, right? Yeah. And you do every football game now. Football games, yeah. yeah. And you do? Uh, women's soccer. Women's soccer. Baseball. Baseball. Baseball's got 162 games a year. <laughs> in the majors, they do at least. Yeah. Now, the greatest thing about Greg is so what we did is we got a baker's dozen from Crumble. We actually paid for this. This is not sponsorship. Are they a corporate sponsor? Uh, we, we think they're friends. If they're not a corporate sponsor, <laughs> I will cover this. <laughs> Hopefully they are. But I know Greg is not going to eat these cookies, so I'm going to We're going to spread through. these around. I'm going to hand them out right now. Let's do it. Let's do it. it. Here we go. Just pass them down, guys. All right. Take what you want. Take what you want. Eat one. Pass them out. That's right. Take and pass. You want the because boxes? the truth is, we are in this together. We want the boxes to come back empty. Yeah. We have some good stuff? I'm sorry about you guys in the back row, because it's not going to make it to you. There's just no, there's no chance. <laughs> By pure numbers, we might make it. But otherwise, yeah. Yeah, enjoy. That's really thoughtful. We'll, find, we'll get uh, water refreshments during the break. And I'm I am going to transfer. Hey, I'm just speaking on behalf of the entire Cougar Nation. Yeah. About how grateful we are for you and your oh, family. Gosh. No, like, and I'm no. saying that really sincerely. Like, it's just is amazing. So the one thing about Greg is he comes on the radio every single game and every single day, and he does such an unbelievable job telling these athlete stories, 
And um, he just is, you're, you're the great BYU storyteller, man. It's pretty incredible. Oh my gosh. Well, it's super thoughtful of you. And uh, I tell everybody when we talk about you know, my career and the sports I do, uh, how blessed I am yep. to have coaches like you. You make the job yep. easy. You know? And we, we do pregame interviews. We do postgame interviews. We do a coach's show interview. We spend a fair amount of time together. Yep. And you make it so easy and so much fun. And uh, I think I and Cougar Nation all join in the gratitude for having you where you are. We love each other. It's just, it's just a mutual thing. Uh, and, and again, congratulations on win number 150 Thank you. Thank between you. his time at UVU and his time at BYU. Last night's win was, was 150, and I think uh, 150 more to come, we hope, is the, is the objective. You know, last night was a great night because we set an all-time school record for a number of main threes in a game, all-time at BYU. That's a record. I mean, this is a three-point shooting program, and to do that all-time is really exciting at 19. It was super exciting. We won our 150th of the game, but the most exciting thing, if I could just indulge for just a moment, was after the game. So my daughter is playing at Ohio University yes, for the indeed. Bobcats. And, and after our game, she was playing at the same time. And I finally got done with media and went to my phone, and she had made a last-second game winner to beat Dayton. It was actually so awesome. Check it out. Here we go. Here it Let's is. go. Ella, top of the key, little ball fake, drive, scoop, score. Three game seconds winner. left, game winner, Ella Pope. What? <laughs> How awesome is that? How about that? These are the Ohio Bobcats. That's Ella's program, pre-mission, post-mission, yeah. and a game winner. And the University of Dayton is never going to want to see a Pope again. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good week for the Popes with the University of Dayton. Really, really special. How crazy is it that it was Dayton that, the team know, that it happened figure. against? It's actually super fun. No, that was so cool to see. So it was a fun night for you all Sports together, wasn't it? Yes. That was so cool. Yeah, I'm glad we got to bring that up. We were going to talk about it later in the show, but a perfect segue from you. That was fantastic. Um, well, behind, beyond, beyond uh, uh, this, this uh, beautiful gesture of yours and what we just saw, just saw from Ella, uh, what else is on your mind tonight as you come on in? Uh, so also, super excited. Is a, this is a total tangent, but it's kind of at the heart of our team. And it's so, the heart of the show, too. This show is one total tangent. It is, yeah, yeah. So we do. We tangentialize. <laughs> I'm not sure that's a word. We just made it one. Here we go. Officially, tangentializing. Um, tangentialization? <laughs> sure. Okay, so for a slight tangentialization, uh, <laughs> as, a, as a basketball team, we're excited tomorrow to start our... Um, 25 days before Christmas, uh, kind of act of kindness every day, light the world. So you may have heard of this program. It's super exciting. Uh, it's kind of sponsored by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we met as a team over the last couple of days and like, we are going to take our shot at an act of kindness every day to kind of keep some perspective. So we're going to try and package that the right way. The idea is to just uh, do some acts of kindness and then hopefully inspire everybody else to do small acts of kindness. Hopefully we're all inspiring each other to do it for 25 straight days. And little things like that can really make a difference in the world. I think they really can. I think our guys are super excited about it. I expect we're going to see some ridiculous things uh, come out <laughs> on social media as they make their attempts to, to make the world a tiny bit better place. But we're super excited about that. And it's, you know, it's, it's, it's these small things that make a huge difference. And so we get to take part in it. It's going to be fun. So hopefully all of you will also join in and, uh, and uh, come up with some very, very small but but significant acts of kindness we could do over the next 25 days. And you've got a remarkable social media team working with your program. And if we follow BYU men's basketball, whether it's Twitter, uh, Instagram, we should see some of the results of this. And yeah, yep. So it, it'll be on. We're, we're kind of assigning one guy to have a public face every day. So we have 25 people in our organization that are going to jump on. So we'll see some faces that we don't see all the time along with the players. It should be super fun. Okay. Our social media team, by the way. So Emma and Maddie, have we mm -hmm. had them on, sh on the show yet? Have we, we have not. About them on the show? But we should. And Shauna is actually incredible. Graphics. This, this team yep. is just, they are lights out. First year we've had them, and they are crushing it for us. Yeah, I know them all, and they do amazing work for yeah. you. And uh, it's been fun to see what they've been putting together. They're so good. Uh, since our last show, man, uh, like since the last show, you beat Missouri State, <laughs> you beat Nichols, you went to the Bahamas, went one and two there, played USC, Butler, Dayton, great games. Then last night you beat Westminster. That's a lot of basketball to squeeze into two weeks. Yeah, it was a lot of basketball. It was really fun, and it's super fun for this group because we're so new and we're so young, 
and we're trying so hard to figure out who we are and what we can be and what change we need to make. And it's been really incredible. And it's just been, it's just been full of like unbelievable uh, wins, like last second game winners and really dramatic scenarios. And it's been full of drama and I love it. Yeah, the battle for Atlantis was a remarkable field. Yeah. I mean, you could argue that like the only tournament maybe with a bet was, was Maui. Yep. Uh, but those two are easily the top two tournaments happening on Thanksgiving week. And, uh, and again, great draws. You got USC, Butler, and Dayton, and you finish that tournament uh, the right way. We'll, talk, we'll, 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 we'll show the Dayton game a little later on, so we'll tease that right now. Yeah. But what a great way to finish uh, that experience down there. Yeah, it was a man. It was it's a, it's a tough trip. I mean, it sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? We went to the Bahamas for a week, and I'm saying it's a tough trip. First of all, the venue is incredible. Very beautiful. It's so beautiful, and and uh, you know the guys had been working hard getting there, and then and then um, we played some really talented teams, and I felt like we played just okay against USC and and took a loss. Um, and then I felt like we played with much more competitive fire. The guys made some adjustments. We played much better against Butler. I was watching Butler tonight playing Kansas State, yeah, an undefeated Kansas kind of State team. Butler's out. playing really well. Yeah, yeah, Butler's a good team and, and uh, couldn't quite come up with the win there, lost in the last seconds. And it's hard, guys, in 48 hours to lose two games. It's really hard. And, um, and then you know we're facing a Dayton team that a week ago was a top 25 team in the country and a veteran team with most of their team back from the last couple of years where they've been really really good and and uh, and um, you know we didn't execute perfectly in the first half but that saga of going through those three games and the way the guys finished it up was really special like it is I mean I love sports right and. Um, and what they did in that game was really incredible. Now, you had your family there with you, uh, and it's an amazing venue, beautiful place, but it felt like you were going from, like, practice gym to game gym to team room to team room to practice. It, it, there's not a lot of free time there, but did you have a little bit of a chance to kind of decompress a little bit before, yeah. maybe, or even after? Yeah, this is a, it's pretty shameful on my part, but I actually did not see my daughters on Thanksgiving Day ever. I did see Leanne for a minute, uh, but then... Uh, the night after the Dayton game, we didn't leave till the next morning. And so we, we won that game, did the media and all the other stuff, and we had a, a family dinner. And then my greatest moment <laughs> off the court of the entire deal was Lee and I snuck out of the hotel and went on a walk on the beach from like 12.30 to 1.30 in the morning. I'm telling you, it was, it was magic. First of all, there's no human being in the world I would rather be with. And it was, it was, it was in the middle of the night, and there was, wasn't a soul out there. It was bright, it was beautiful, and it was warm. And I was like, this beach is incredible. Who needs the sun? It's white sands and warm oh, water. Man, it, was, it was magic. It was yeah. great. So. Leanne, thumbs up on that experience? Yeah. I felt like we should have had music going while you were talking about yeah. that. Yeah. Well, Lee was, at, you know, at 12th, I'm like, hey, let's go for a walk on the beach. Lee was slightly less enthusiastic, but once we got down there, we both agreed it was fantastic. That yeah, was so cool. All right, uh, so you get back from the Bahamas Sunday to maybe decompress a little bit. Then it was back to business, and you had to get ready for an in-state meeting with Westminster last night in Salt Lake. Let's do take a look back at last night's record-setting win with some highlights and stats presented by Intermountain Healthcare. It's BYU in Westminster, downtown Salt Lake City, Vivint Arena. And, uh, well, this is the theme of the highlights. Uh, a Noah Waterman three to get things going for you guys. There were a lot of these going down last night. You know, it was a combination of Westminster's game plan, which was pretty conservative, and our guys working really hard to find great shots for each other. And you see every single one of these, with the exception of maybe a couple of Gideons where they went under the screens, every single one is a catch and shoot shot. And um, the guys stood up and finished them and owned them and, and did a terrific job making plays for each other. Took a while for Dallin Hall to make his first threes. They came in the Dayton game and now he's finding a stroke a little bit. Yeah, I mean, he hit the squarely the front of the rim there and with the, <laughs> such incredible touch, managed to ring that one home. Richie Saunders is shooting over 40% as a rookie. He's doing unbelievable. Uh, Rudy keeps coming coming along. He's just getting better and better. He's been a positive assist to turnover ratio for the last three games, which has been spectacular. And certainly Noah got to start it off, shooting the ball really well early. Second straight start for Noah. Jackson Robinson, we're going to see hit back-to-back -back threes. He opens up five for five from deep on the night. If you get a chance to watch Jackson shoot the ball, it looks completely effortless. It, it is really a thing of beauty. Like, he was born to make shots. It looks like it takes no energy or effort, and it's just is a, it's a beautiful stroke. BYU was up 63-26 at halftime. Gideon says, I got to get some of this. And so Gideon got involved in the Yeah, back-to-back -back threes. Both times they were pretty stubborn about going under, and Gideon just made the read and said, hey, don't go under. 
And, um, he, you know, the guys did a great job owning shots. Um, it was a fun night that way. It's a fun night when the ball goes in the basket. So, BYU had that 44-point uh, lead on the uh, Gideon 3 we saw a moment ago. And that was the large lead of the night. Uh, some Dallin Hall, some Richie Saunders, and then uh, Tanner Toulson's going to get into the act. Uh, Tanner, son of Andy, one of the great shooters in BYU history. And uh, Tanner Toulson with the 19th three. That was the record setter right night. Yep, he had the 19th three and the 100th point. And here's the 100th the point. Throw. There you go. Yeah, yeah. So Tanner was just like, I'm the closer. <laughs> I'm the closer, baby. Let me set records on my first night on the court. I thought he did a terrific job, especially focusing on the defensive end of the floor. And a 30-point win is the result. A BYU hits the century mark on the number. And you see that 19 of 40. 19 most threes ever made in a game. And the 40 ties the most ever three-point attempts in a game. And, uh, and a good assist number, too. A decent assist rate on the night as well. Yeah, I was um, super proud of that. You know, anytime we can live in that space, we're, we're, we're really happy. A 22-10, a 2-1 to one as a team is, is really good for us. We haven't actually been there consistently yet this season. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, we'll spend more time there. And since you've been the head coach, there's been an 18, an 18, and a 19 in terms of number of threes made in the game. Yeah, fun games, uh, really fun games. You know, the LMU game was really, really special. And then we've had two with Westminster and, and – uh, you know, it's, it's um, what these guys accomplish. I mean, listen, shooting the ball is an art that you study every single day for your entire life and you never master. You just incrementally get a little bit better, a little bit better after years of work. And so these guys' ability to kind of be, the, like I said, BYU is, a, is an incredibly talented, historically incredible three-point shooting program. And so for these guys to be a part of the all-time record is pretty fun. Now let's go back in time a little bit. We talked about it earlier, but we haven't talked about it in great detail yet. Let's get to that 23-point comeback uh, to close your week in the Bahamas on a winning note. It is BYU in Dayton, the Flyers in the battle for Atlantis last Friday. And uh, it was a rough start for BYU. And uh, after Tumani Kamara dunks, you're down 23. So I told the guys before we came out, you know, our game plan was like, okay, the first thing we want to do is we want to get down by 23, okay? <laughs> That's step number one. And so we got there and I was like, you guys did this way faster than I thought you would. Congratulations. And then we spent the rest of our game, the game clawing our way out. It was super proud of the guys. And uh, when it, once it became a single-digit game, and it got there relatively quickly, too, yep. in the second half, it was on at that point. Yeah, and it's really interesting. You know, it's, it's, um, you, if you look at the sequence, we're actually down 13, and we get it down to nine with two straight buckets that are incredibly. Gideon George races all the way across the court for the three-point line to come with a huge offensive rebound, and while falling out of bounds, finds Foose under the basket for the first bucket to cut to 11. Uh, Dayton comes down, Foose has an incredible possession defensively um, uh, in the post against a really, really talented veteran uh, post player. We come up with a stop, it's a loose ball, and Gideon trucks over, you know, kind of going for a pass. It's an unbelievable effort to get down to nine. And that's how hard it is to get it under 10. It's so hard to get it under 10, and these guys did, and then they just kept working and working until they got it. And then you feel like you're pulling away at the very, very end, which is the yeah. best feeling. Yeah, it was, uh, it, was, it was really spectacular. You know, it's just, I say, I've said this a lot over the last couple weeks. Like, I love winning. Like, I'm addicted to winning. I think winning is, in sports, it's certainly the greatest thing. It is just like, it is awesome. And if there's only one thing that's better than, than, than winning, it's, it's watching guys grow. That is like at the core of all things core. That's the best part of athletics is watching, for, in my case, these young men grow as human beings and grow in their toughness and grow in their belief and grow in everything else. And in this, what is 24, so in these 96 hours, uh, it was really incredible to watch these guys grow from where we started to where they finished and the toughness and grit that they showed. That game was a, after the being 0-2 and taking a beating. Mm -hmm. uh, it, that was a, just a definite defining moment of great. It was super fun to be a part of. You know, it's, it's moments like that. We're walking through the, the handshake lines, and there's been so much emotion and so little sleep for three straight days. And, you know, uh, I was in tears, and, and uh, a couple of guys on my staff were in tears, and it was super special. Mm. I'm talking at length so that Greg won't ask me what happened in the locker room at halftime because I'm really not allowed to repeat any of that. <laughs>
So it was, it was more than just you being happy about your guys executing the game plan going down to Yeah, it was super dynamic at halftime. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, not exactly island vibes at halftime? It was not island vibes. <laughs> it was some island. It wasn't it was, it was some island somewhere. All's well that ends well, Coach. <laughs> yes, it does. All's well that ends well. All right. All right, BYU won 79-75. Uh, fantastic comeback. By the way, uh, I, I know we got to get to film room here, but uh, you know, I th- you were down 17 in the second half at LMU, came back to win in overtime. You were down 23, then 16 in the second half. You've already had some pretty amazing efforts from your guys. So I've been really blessed, guys. So I was down 31 uh, when I was in Kentucky at LSU. Hmm. For st- so I think the second or third biggest comeback in the history of the NCAA. Um, we were down 26 or 25 in the NCAA tournament. 25 period. against I, know, I was an assistant in Dayton coach, of all things. <laughs> um, and came back and won. That's the, the biggest comeback in the history of the NCAA tournament. When I was at UVU, we were down 27 at Denver on the road and came back and won it. And then, of course, the LMU game last year and this game. So, I mean... As an optimist, I would say, man, I've been really forced to be a part of teams with a ton of grit. The haters would say, how does this dude keep getting down by so much? <laughs> but, but I'll tell you what, like it's a real tribute to these student athletes, uh, especially the makeup of these kids here at BYU, that uh, it just is, it's one of the things that makes our team special is these guys just don't have any quit and they, they refuse to give in to frustration and they will absorb a lot and keep fighting. And, and these, these young men carry the, the, those lessons out in their life, and that's why they're doing spectacular things after basketball, and it's pretty awesome. Love that about him. Let's uh, get to film room. He was instrumental in the comeback win over Dayton, and he continued to play a big role in last night's win over Westminster. And tonight, newcomer Jackson Robinson joins our Jerem Jordan inside the film room. All right, Jackson, how are the Bahamas, man? Uh, it was good. It was good just kind of getting out there. I'd never been out there before, so... It was fun uh, just being with my teammates and, uh, you know, just kind of having some big moments. Uh, not every day can you do things like going to the Bahamas and competing uh, to play against some of the best competition. Uh, so it was just a great experience. First two games didn't go your way. Tough uh, losses to USC and Butler, close ones. And then Dayton, you're down 23. You guys tried to see how far you could go down and still come back. <laughs> we think it's the second largest comeback in BYU history. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So walk me through this first play where you guys are down 20. You get a fortuitous bounce back to you for three. It was just kind of a broken play. Foos got the ball at the top of the key. You could kind of see he was trying to figure out what he should do with it. And he found Richie. Richie attacked, got to the cup, and got blocked. Somehow fell in my lap, and I felt like I was wide open, and I knocked it down. What did it mean to see that first one go through? Because you start a 4-23 from three. We've seen you practicing after games on the court behind Spencer in the post game. Mm-hmm. To see that first one go down, what did that mean? You know, it was just kind of a next play mentality. Um, I mean, the game was happening so fast. We were down so big. Just shooting it with confidence and knowing that it was going to go in was just the biggest thing for me, and then moving on to the next play. Okay, and one of those next plays is this crazy bounce where you get it on a break for a dunk. <laughs> yeah, uh, Foos did a great job of uh, just kind of staying solid in the post there. The guy kind of threw a crazy pass. I was not my man, Rudy, had seen kind of where he was wanting to go because Foos had cut everything off. G was kind of just surveying the floor, figuring out what he could do, and Rudy saved it. Somehow I bounced my way again. <laughs> <laughs> it goes Rudy to Dallin off of Foos, up to you. Yeah. And then I love the social media post by BYU Basketball. Ave Maria, the bench all excited, yeah. and the throwdown. That nah, was a great moment, for sure. And, and you seem to be a, a chill guy, a quiet guy. Did I see a yell there? You did, you did. It doesn't happen very often. Some expression there? I had to. That was a big moment. It was a big um, moment. Yeah. Late in the game. Uh, you guys are down five. You've, you've come back. You did this the previous two games, but you guys get over the hump in this one. Mm-hmm. Um, there's an opportunity here where Dallin finds you in the corner. Dallin just does a great job of coming off those ball screens and probing, seeing the open man, getting down to the basket, looking for KDAs, playing off two feet, things like that. It was just kind of a feel corner feel. I was kind of spaced up for a second and came down, see he was attacking the basket and knocked it down. When did you feel like, okay, we could actually do this? I honestly would say the beginning of the second half. Um, coach kind of came in, got on us. Everybody was really upset with the performance that we put up in the first half. Um, but we knew we just couldn't hang our heads on it and we had to move on. And uh, everybody came with the energy in the second half and I could feel it. And I mean, we just progressed our way back into that lead. Okay, soon after. 
you take the lead right here because you have this uh, sweet dish to get in. Did you see him out of the corner of your eye quick? I did, I did. I seen the defender coming to me. I knew as soon as he come, came to me, I seen Gene in the corner, so I just had to quick one more. He was wide open, I knew he was gonna knock it down. You still wanna finish the deal, but to take the lead yeah. after being down 23 in this moment, what was that like? Specifically this play, I'm honestly really proud of our team. Uh, this play kinda just shows the progression that we've made this season, uh, even though we've lost three games. Just to go up on this play, great ball movement, great find by Foose. It was just a great play. Okay, then in overtime, you take the lead for good on another corner three, this time on the other side. Uh, it was a great find by Rudy. Just kind of drawing the defense and seeing that my man was going to help and just kind of getting it to me in the corner. I knew I was going to be open, so I just let it fly and went in. Always fun when it's right in front of your bench too, man. Exactly. Having my guys behind me cheering me on. Okay, and then this one's from deep, man. Dallin does a nice job getting in the paint here. Yeah, he did a great job all game, just kind of attacking. Uh, you see at the beginning, he gives us a shot fake and kind of gets to the middle, figures out what's open. He sees G, but he also sees me in the corner of his eye through the no look, and I just happened to be out there. <laughs> so I just let it fly from where I was. And look, you're a guy on the end of the bench, hands up before you even shoot it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's my guy trading. Well, what's happened with the three-pointer? Because you found it the last couple of games shooting 50%. Yeah, uh, I mean, I would just say it's just confidence uh, and just all the reps and the work that I put in uh, day in, day out. Um, the film sessions with Keegan, uh, just all the stuff all together just keeping the confidence and knowing that my teammates and my coaches have my back also, no matter what I'm shooting from the field. They just know that I'm a shooter and just to keep shooting. How good of a shooter was your mom back in the day? Because we showed some pictures of her when we played <laughs> Missouri State here. Uh, she, she was a baller. I heard she wasn't the shooter. It was my aunt, but my mom was uh, a foreman, and so she uh, did a lot of work in the post. So yeah. now, now, 30 years ago, you would have been a four man, six foot seven. Yeah, now, no, for sure. Now you're just a wing that shoots threes, right? <laughs> for sure. That's for awesome, sure. man. Yeah. Well, congratulations and good luck this week. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, uh, Jackson's got a, a reserved demeanor, but uh, really expressive there. Fun guy to have on your team. Yeah, he's. Um, it's fun to watch him grow, and he is really trying. You know, it's, it was fun. He's walking to this Westminster game last night. And, and all he was thinking and talking about was how we can have an impact on the defensive end. And mm -hmm. when guys build, you know, we talk about this all the time, when they build their games on reproducible things, then all the special offensive stuff comes. And I'm super proud with him taking that attitude. We got a lot of guys on the team right now that are co committed to trying to be better on, the, on that end of the ball. And so the, the, the other end's going to come. All right, it is break time. And as we break, your reminder that your day-to-day -day Cougar Sports play-by-play -play happens on BYU Sports Nation. Join Jerem and Spencer Linton weekdays at noon Eastern on BYU TV and BYU Radio. When we come back, we'll welcome the big man on campus, Fuseni Traore, when BYU basketball with Mark Pope continues. Stay with us. For Tucano's Brazilian Grill. Are you craving Chuhasco dining featuring flame grilled, skewered meats, sliced, sizzling table side with grilled vegetables and pineapple? Or maybe you're missing Tucano's festival of gourmet salads and hot sides, rich decadent desserts, and famous fresh squeezed Brazilian lemonade. Well, the grills are fired up and it's all available for dine in or takeout today. So get fired up for Tucano's Brazilian Grill, a proud sponsor of BYU Athletics for over 20 years. Call 801 224 4774 for reservations or order online at tucanos.com. Mother, Father, thank you for taking the time to meet with me here at the kitchen table. We as a team need to take my high school education to the next level. I have been made aware of a new opportunity with greater flexibility and a wider range of class offerings. I'm speaking, of course, of BYU Online High School. Earn a real high school diploma with BYU Online High School, bringing education home. I was also hoping I could get a corner office overlooking the back patio and trampoline. Find out more at highschool.byu.edu. of joy to you, not a dystopian book. Your blood runs blue despite what science says. You're BYU and we get you because we give it our all to ensure the Cougs can too, be it injury prevention, rehabilitation, or orthopedic surgery. And we do the same for you. Intermountain Utah Valley Hospital, official medical provider for BYU athletics. Learn more at intermountainsportsmed.org. 
This holiday, whether you're roasting a Smith's Simple Truth Turkey for 40 or making a Murray's Baked Brie for two, whether you're baking a pie with fresh Cosmic Crisp apples like Grandma's or ordering private selection cream pies when Grandma's pie is all gone, Smith's has fast, fresh delivery and free pickup so you can make holiday meals that bring you all together to create memories that last. Smith's, fresh for everyone. Free pickup on orders of $35 or more. Restrictions may apply. BYU Basketball with Mark Pope is brought to you by Siegfried and Jensen, helping Utah families for over 30 years. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. Cascade Collision Repair, serious about perfection. And by Smith's, fresh for everyone. Welcome back to BYU Basketball with Mark Pope. Special Wednesday edition of the show with our usual Tuesday spot occupied by a game last night against Westminster. We're back to our Tuesday schedule next week. Well, when the WCC coaches voted on their preseason all-conference honorees, there was one BYU Cougar on the list, and he made the all-conference team after just one season in the league. Tonight, he's our special guest inside Studio C. Please help me welcome back to the show for the first time since his freshman season, Fusene Traore. <laughs> Good to see you again, yeah. Foose. Thanks for being here. Oh, yeah, thank you. Ah, big Foose smile. In his, on he's in his fatigues because yeah. he's a warrior right now. <laughs> <laughs> we covered the Dayton game in our first segment. Uh, how, how, much, how much fun was that to be a part of a 23-point comeback last week? Oh, it was, it was just crazy, you know. Like, after halftime, you know, Coach went and talked to us. He was... I don't know for sure because was mad, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he told us, yeah, we just, just said that's not his first time he's been in that place, you know. He said he's been in the worst player and that, and he said always come back and win. And that just make everybody went crazy, you know. We said for sure we can do it here. Yeah. And you did it. Yeah, and we did it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what's interesting about that Dayton game is, um, is that we got off over 33s and we shot the ball really well from the three-point line. And in large part, that was because Foose put on a clinic the day before against Butler. And so every time Foose touched the ball inside, he was swarmed by four guys, literally four guys every single time. And it just opened up all these passing windows. And it just shows you the impact that Foose can have on this game. It was, it was actually a super special week, week for him. And and um, in that Butler game, he gave a superhuman performance. It was really special. Foose, last yeah. season ended in March. Mm -hmm. um, what did you do in your offseason before this next one began? What was your offseason like? Uh, it was just like same thing, you know, working out with Shark, you know. Like, you know, Shark. Coach Shark. Always, yeah, Coach Shark, you know, is yeah. always, always trying to help you, you know. Like, he's been helping us a lot. And also the coaches, you know. We've been working a lot of post stuff, shooting, you know. Did you stay I've here the whole here. time? Yeah, I was, I, was, I, I was here the whole time. I just went to couple fishing, you know, just fishing for fun. But you know, Foose is <laughs> a world-class fisherman. It's like an expert angler, right? No, it's incredible. He is like the fish whisperer. Yes. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> do you like the fishing in Utah? Oh yeah, I do. Yeah, I do love fishing. Do you do fly fishing? In addition, uh, do you like fly fishing? You tried fly fishing, or just? Yeah, I did try. I did try two times, but I like other one better. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, where do you like to go? I like. I like to go to strawberry mm -hmm. and all the little stuff here, you know. Okay. Yeah. So good fishing in Utah? Oh, yeah, it's good. Uh, so far, okay. so good, yeah. <laughs> and we, Foose, um, Foose, Foose is a great fisherman with a pole. But whenever he gets frustrated, he just goes straight bare hands. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's incredible to watch. Oh, we, <laughs> <laughs> we, we, had, uh, we talked to Richie uh, Saunders during one of our, our post-game shows. And he was so happy to be playing with you again. Can you go oh, back yeah. into your relationship with Richie Saunders? Oh, he's just been, yeah, like my first, my first year here, you know, I couldn't speak any English, but we, I live with Richie where, I was, where my host family, you know. Where You're both second, at Wasatch Academy. Yeah, Wasatch Academy, you know. And it's always make me talk, you know. I say, man, that dude talk, man. <laughs> <laughs> he always make me talk, so I can, but like three months after, like, I really see like a, a lot of improvement on my English, you know. And we also play like the same high school, you know, and he always makes me work, you know. Is it Whenever fun? Whenever I go to the gym, he, he calls me up, you know. 
So having him as a teammate again. Again, cool yeah. That? He used to be my big brother, but now he's, he's my little brother. You know? that's what I always, <laughs> yeah, that's what I always told him, you know. Yeah, but he's a, he's a good guy. And Coach Pope, since you first met Foos to where he is now, uh, just in the communication, the language, the settling in, how's he come along to you? Yeah, so this is your fourth language or third language? Third, my third. His third language, and he's incredible. So we talk about this all the time, but imagine this. Imagine having English as your third language, flying across the world to a place that you don't know, coming to BYU as a freshman, being a 4.0 student. Mm. Like, it's incredible. And that's... Thank you. Now, now, uh, that, that's because Foose is really smart. He's smarter than all of mm. us probably put together. And also because he works really, really hard. He works so hard. Um, and then he got a little shy when I said 4.0 because right now American Heritage is threatening his 4.0. Oh, if you yeah. know American Heritage at <laughs> BYU, it's a real deal. Finals oh, coming yeah, up. That's, Let's yeah. go. That class been giving me hard attack, you know. It's just, <laughs> it's just crazy. It hurt me. It hurt me too. I, I came as a Canadian uh, doing the American Heritage thing. I was like, we gotta have a Canadian Heritage class. I might do a little better. My first test, I was super confident, you know, because I feel like I know all this stuff. And I went sitting with tests in the sun, and I just, I got no idea what was going on, you know. <laughs> I, was, I felt that way a lot. Yeah. Uh, I was just, you know, I said, wow, that class is. It's really different, you know. Yeah, <laughs> really different. That's but I'm excited. It. We only have two more, two more weeks. <laughs> yeah. <can> do it. <laughs> <laughs> you can relax a little bit. Um, uh, Bahamas. How'd you enjoy the Bahamas? Yeah, it was. I think it was okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we. Of of course, we want to win there, you know. You were there to work, but yeah, that uh, was our our main focus. Just go and win, you know. But it didn't happen, you know. But I feel like we learned a lot about each other, you know, and also where we are. Did you have a little bit of fun? Oh, yeah, I do, yeah. Just, yeah, I went to a couple slides, which was nice, yeah. The, wa the water park, the, the water big park, slide? Yeah, the slide, yeah. Did you do the one that goes under the sharks and yes, everything I else? I did that, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, we, no, I don't know if you would like to talk about Go ahead, <laughs> hey, we tell all here. Go ahead. Oh, okay, yeah, it was our last night after we won, you know. It was me, Trevor, Troy, Ruchi, TC, and Tanner Tulsan, you know. And so I the, didn't know you were going to throw all those guys <laughs> under the bus. <laughs> Like, I thought you would just say some of us, but now that they're all clearly yeah, identified, see, that is, yeah. now you can tell the yeah, rest. you know. And all the water park was closed, you know, and the shark one was closed, you know, and we just said, yeah, I think so, yeah, we should do it, you know. And we went to open the gate and just start sliding. <laughs> and when I, yeah, there is a shark glass, you know, and there wasn't a lot of water, and you have to walk there and run so you can get up quick, you know. <laughs> This is all one in the morning, you said? Uh -huh. This is this is after everything's closed down. After, yeah, yeah. After closed after down. Everything closed down. So they found a way to sneak in. I didn't know this. I'm innocent. <laughs> in this You're not sanctioning the behavior. Yeah. Well, they were so you were just walking on the beach with your wife at that point. Yeah. They were, they were so <laughs> deliriously happy about this incredible comeback, which was yeah. a monumental comeback win. So, so I heard about this the next morning. So they they climb up this. You've seen it on TV, and you go down this slide, and the the end of it, you're actually sliding in a tunnel through the aquarium, and there's sharks all around you, and you come out. So apparently. The water was running, but it wasn't full speed. So when they got to the bottom through the tube of the sharks, they wouldn't, they didn't keep going. Yeah. <laughs> so if you could picture Foose in this little, uh, in this little uh, tube, uh, tube, trying to walk the through. Tube wagon, yeah. I wish, I wish I, oh. had, I wish I had been there with them when this was happening. Cause I would have, I would have told them that at night they open up the tube Ooh. to the sharks so they can swim. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't get a chance yeah. to, to give them that warning. Oh, oh that would be crazy. Yeah. I, I, I only wish that uh, I only wish that uh, that Maddie and Emma had been aware of this and had been at the other side of the tube to get a picture of, of Foos trying to get out of a oh. dry water slide tube at one in the morning. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. It was crazy, but it was fun, you know. Well, you're coming off a win. Anything goes. It was oh fun. yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> That's awesome. So I, there's another story. Do you want to tell the other story? Mm. Oh, you don't know. You got it. You, you, <laughs> so we skip it. We'll pass. We'll pass. Let's oh, oh. <laughs> no, you got it. Coach. Yeah, you got it. OK, so I, I was not there to witness it in person, but you hear all these stories. So there is a, like a epic, lazy river. It's all kind of a little yeah. waterfall. And the whole thing is, like, I guess, like 45 minutes long to get around the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So so Foos, who does everything so well, is a beginning swimmer. This is swimming is new to him a little yeah. bit. 
Mm -hmm. And so apparently he was in the lazy river and his inner tube flipped over. And the, re the report that I got was that all of a sudden guys came around the corner and Foose was, it's in a big ravine and <laughs> Foose was trying to scale the side of the wall. <laughs> So we're going to have to have a conversation about oh, yeah, it was. safety. <laughs> <laughs> uh. But just, all in all, it was a good time. We'll just leave it at that. Yeah, all right. it, was, yeah. it was a good time there. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, we're going to take a break. Uh, when we come back, uh, Foose goes through a, a gauntlet of action movie trivia. You didn't know this was coming. Maybe you did. BYU Basketball's Mark Pope continues after this. Stay with us. Okay, that's good. Whoa, whoa, Dave! Sorry, I'll go grab some paper towels. You can't let Dave pour things. He works at JCW's. They fill stuff up past the brim over there, like their milkshakes. They're thick, rich, and oh my gosh. Delicious? Oh no, Dave's filling up Crystal's car for her. Dave, stop! Hey, this is Clark for JCW. Stop into any of our five locations today. We're located in American Fork, Thanksgiving Point, Provo, South Jordan, and our new location in Harriman. Come in and see why at JCW's we believe in quality and a lot of it. From business matters to family matters, from legal advice to litigation, Fillmore Spencer is your full-service law firm headquartered just a mile north of the Marriott Center on University Avenue with branch offices in Salt Lake and St. George. Top-rated lawyers consistently voted Utah Valley's favorite law firm. With its broad legal expertise, Fillmore Spencer can play offense or defense and even provide a little coaching. Fillmore Spencer, solving problems and seizing opportunities for you, your family, and your business. I'm a professional mom, and I mean business. Between helping the kids with school, coaching the soccer team, and everything else, I don't have time to mess around. Pro tip, BYU food to go. They've got everything from Kahlua pork, classic side dishes, to elegant desserts. Whether it's a wedding reception, family reunion, tailgating party, or a hungry ward, they've got you covered. Simply order, pick up, and serve. BYU Food To Go will help you put together an amazing event that everyone will enjoy. Check out BYU Food To Go. Hi, I'm Lizzie from The Food Nanny. Last year, I got my style checking from Mountain America and I absolutely love it. The rewards are amazing. And now my style checking has even more baked in benefits like telehealth, mobile phone protection, and exclusive discounts on dining and entertainment. So good. Get the only checking account you truly need at any Mountain America branch or macu.com. Insured by NCUA. Membership required. All right, this is BYU Basketball with uh, Mark Pope, presented by Siegfried and Jensen. Let's keep having fun. Let's go to the game show portion of tonight's show. Ooh, Ooh. it's impossible trivia. This is nice. Foose, in your biography on BYUcougars.com, it says that you love action movies, especially the Mission Impossible franchise. Is that right? Uh, yep. Okay. Tom Cruise is my guy. Oh, he, Tom Cruise is your guy? Yeah. Have you seen all the movies? Yeah, I did. Okay. Uh, tonight, Foose and Mark Pope will go head to head oh, in Mission oh, Impossible oh, trivia. Oh, you ready? Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Question one. Oh man. This is for both of you. Whoever thinks has the answer first, you can give it a go. In what year was the first Mission Impossible movie released in the U.S.? 2018. 1996. Foose only got here in 2018, so everything starts oh, there. Everything started in 2018. <laughs> <laughs> that is an unfair question. Unfair and and question. so Coach Coach Pope says 1996 is correct. Way to go, Coach Pope has a one nothing oh, lead. Oh man, here we go. The answer is right in. <laughs> yes. All right. I actually had no idea. I just looked at the the answers. Like, oh, no, no. Yeah, I didn't see. I didn't see that. As of today, how many Mission Impossible movies have there been? You say five. No, I think it's six or seven. What do you think? I'm saying seven. The answer would be six. Oh, so we'll give that one to Foose. He said oh, six okay, or seven. Idea. You had Mission Impossible 1, 2, and 3, Ghost <laughs> Protocol, Rogue Nation, Fallout. Those are the six. Okay? The last one came out in 2018. Question three. Uh, which Mission Impossible movie stars the late Philip Seymour Hoffman as a sadistic arms dealer in possession of the toxic weapon called the Rabbit's Foot? Which Mission Impossible movie was it of the six? Mm. Do you know? <laughs> no. Okay, hold on. Oh, no. You, well, don't look at it, Coach. Well, it just says, it, oh, it just gives the number. <laughs> I'm saying Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. 
It was Mission Impossible 3. Oh. Came out in 2006. Everyone's up on their Philip Seymour Hoffman trivia. All right, uh, question four. Which Mission Impossible movie features a Tom Cruise stunt that was filmed in the state of Utah? Ooh, what? That's the picture of it. There's the picture Ooh, of the stunt. And that was at Dead Horse oh, Point man. State Park in Moab. So which Mission Impossible was it that had that scene filmed Four. in Utah? The first one? He says the first one. Fallout? I don't know. What do you think? I, don't, I have no idea. Okay, it's Mission Impossible 2. That was number two. Uh, Mission Impossible 2 for that one. I've lost track of who's winning or losing, but we're all winners. Yeah, we're uh, right. Question five. <laughs> question five. Tom Cruise climbed up the Burj Khalifa Tower That's in Mission cool. Impossible Ghost Protocol. In which country and or city is that tower located? Do you know, Foos? Uh, nope. Okay, what's it called? What's it, what's it called? It's called the Burj Khalifa Tower. Burj Khalifa. Burj Khalifa. This is your side of the world. Uh, okay, let's you go, let, let's say Dubai. They say Dubai? So yeah. he's going Dubai, what are you thinking? Um, well, I can't go Dubai then, I'm gonna go, it's not Istanbul, I'm going Kuala Lumpur. And the answer here is Dubai. Yeah. In the United Arab Emirates. Ooh. By the way, <laughs> uh, if you wanted to go from Mali to Dubai, it's only 6,000 kilometers. Oh. No big deal. Wow. All right. Uh, question six. In Mission Impossible Fallout, we meet villain August Walker here, Ooh. played by Henry Cavill, yeah. which is the first time he's ever played a villain. For what role or superhero role is Henry Cavill better known? Is that true? Uh, wow. Henry Cavill has he a is super rather famous. Super man. Is rather, what? what's, what's that? Say Superman. He says Superman. I got a problem with that. You can't be Superman and, and then play a bad guy. That's range. Yeah. That that's called that's range. It's role. range. So he says Superman. You want to go with a different answer there, Coach Pope? Uh, yeah, I'll go. Um, I don't know. It's Superman. There we go. The answer is Superman. Yeah, Superman. There, <laughs> yeah it's, there we go. And our last one. Uh, besides Tom Cruise, your guy, mm -hmm. which Mission Impossible main actor has been in every movie? Ooh. All six. All six. All six movies. There's been Tom Cruise in every one of them, and then oh, only yeah. one other guy's been in every one. I know the answer is, to this. The actor? Yeah. So there are the options. I think it's Ving Rhames. Ving Rhames? You want to go with Coach on that one? Yeah, I'm go with, yeah. The answer is Ving Rhames. There we go. Hmm. And again, oh, whether or not... I haven't even seen him. Yeah. It's Ving <laughs> Rhames. There we go. Uh, uh, those were seven skill testing questions. I'm not sure who got more than the other. We're just going to go ahead and, and call Foose the winner. Hey, yeah, I guess we both win. You know? Foose, this Tom Cruise is amazing, but he never came down, back from down 23 to win. Oh, yeah, not true, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you talk about Mission Impossible. Let's see him do that. Mission oh, Impossible yeah. against Comeback. Dave. Comeback. There we go. Tom Cruise, let's see what you got, baby. <laughs> oh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I got you. <laughs> Thanks for playing. Next Tuesday, you can join us for more BYU Basketball oh. with Mark Pope. It's December 6th, a week from uh, yesterday at 8.30 Eastern Time, 6.30 Mountain. Coming up next, we'll have social media questions for Foos and the coach from BYU Basketball with Mark Pope continues. We're back after this. Are you craving Shuhasco Dining featuring flame-grilled, skewered meats, sliced, sizzling tableside with grilled vegetables and pineapple? Or maybe you're missing Tucano's Festival of Gourmet Salads and Hot Sides, rich, decadent desserts, and famous fresh-squeezed Brazilian lemonade. Well, the grills are fired up, and it's all available for dine-in or takeout today. So get fired up for Tucano's Brazilian Grill, a proud sponsor of BYU Athletics for over 20 years. Call 801-224-4774 for reservations or order online at tucanos.com. This holiday, whether you're roasting a Smith's Simple Truth Turkey for 40 or making a Murray's Baked Brie for two. Whether you're baking a pie with fresh cosmic crisp apples like Grandma's or ordering private selection cream pies when Grandma's pie is all gone. Smith's has fast, fresh delivery and free pickup so you can make holiday meals that bring you all together to create memories that last. Smith's, fresh for everyone. Free pickup on orders of $35 or more. Restrictions may apply. When you think of BYU... Probably don't think about high school. But now BYU offers a full time high school education to students, and it's called BYU Online High School. Flexible enrollment options are available for a variety of learners. BYU Online High School, bringing education home. Hey, Cougar fans, it's Taysom Hill. Football's a tough sport, but what's tougher is trying to find movies and shows nowadays that aren't full of profanity, sexual content, or graphic violence. That's why I'm glad I found VidAngel. 
With VidAngel, you can skip offensive content in the shows you stream from Netflix, Amazon Video, Apple TV Plus, and more. Now that's something to rise and shout about. So score a touchdown with your family and learn more at vidangel.com. VidAngel. Watch more. Worry less. BYU Basketball with Mark Pope is brought to you by... Siegfried and Jensen, helping Utah families for over 30 years. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. Cascade Collision Repair, serious about perfection. And by Smith's, fresh for everyone. All right, uh, back on the program. Let's get to some social media Q&A for Foose and Coach Pope. This is coming from Stuart Maxfield on Twitter. A uh, question for both of you. Uh, what did the team learn most about itself in the Bahamas? What do you think, Foose? What did you learn most about yourselves? I think, so. <clears throat> like I said before, you know, we learned about like, how we can be really good. You know? we, for sure, we need to get a lot better. But there is a lot of stuff we can like, feel. Everybody feels like we can go super far. You know? like if we decide to play, like what we did in the Bahamas our last game, there's nobody in the whole, whole country who can beat us you know, if we decide. I think so that's where we need to live, you know. Okay, where you yeah. need to live. Coach Pope. Um, I think, you know, as a coach, the most gratifying thing is seeing these guys have just an uh, unquenchable fight. Like, it's just awesome. Like, you as a coach, you go into competition, you hope your guys have that, and these guys at least got to feel it um, for three days, facing some massive adversity and still hanging in there and fighting. And that is like the special sauce that allows guys to get better. Foose, next question coming for Foose. Foose, who are you rooting for in the World Cup? Oh, for sure it's Argentina, you know. Because, big win today. Yeah, big win today because of Lionel Messi, you know. Yeah. For sure is my favorite player. Me too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he missed okay. a penalty today, but oh, Argentina yeah, did, still but, won. Yeah. He still played great. No, he's still very good, though, you know. Yeah. Sometimes that happens. <laughs> Sometimes it happens. Yeah, yeah he's, like, he's, he's scored like 100-plus penalties in his life. Yeah. Um, uh, next question, Foose as well. Question for Foose. Uh, who's your favorite NBA player, or who do you model your game after? Oh, my favorite NBA player for sure is Steph Curry now. Steph Curry? Because, yeah, I think so. I said that story last year. I didn't used to love basketball, you know, until I watched him, you know, it was just, it just made me go crazy since that day. <laughs> I just fell in love, you know. I'm a big Warriors fan, big Steph Curry fan, you know, it's just, yeah. Okay. And then uh, our last question goes, uh, this is for Coach Pope. Wait, wait, can we finish that? So sure. you model your game after Steph? <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess. Who do you model your game after? Mm. I don't know, maybe like Draymond Green. Coach always said I Draymond? Know, play like his defense, you know? Yeah. He's a great defense, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I, you don't shoot threes like, like, like Steph. Yeah, but I'm... Not yet. I'm... I'm working on it. He's working on it. It's coming. It's coming. Watch out. Uh, for Coach, uh, what will it take for us to get Kentucky Flat Talk Mark Pope for the Big 12? What are the chances you, might, what the chance well, you rock that next so year? So actually, the trick is I have to actually grow more hair to get there. I'm telling you, there was a time when that style was like cutting edge. <laughs> So the chances of that reoccurring are not great at this moment in time, you're saying? Well, Colin Chandler uh, made some deal with me about growing my hair. I can't remember what it was. I had to grow my hair out for something. So maybe. We'll see. Okay. All right. Uh, there's plenty of time for us yes, to, get, to get to that point. All right. Let's uh, talk about the weekend. Uh, Saturday, uh, Cougars take on uh, South Dakota. Uh, they're not the Coyotes. They're the Coyotes, and they're specific about that. Ooh. Okay, you might think it's the Coyotes, but you do not want to say Coyotes around them. They're Coyotes. That's what they want to be called. They're the Yotes. BYU, South Dakota. We got pregame on BYU TV and pregame on BYU Radio, both starting at 2.30 Eastern, 12.30 Mountain. The game at 3.30 Eastern, 1.30 Mountain. And then postgame coverage on BYU TV and BYU Radio after a big Saturday in Salt Lake City. As we take another break, here's this week's trivia question presented by Cascade Collision Repair, serious about perfection. We know that BYU set its three-point record last night with 19 threes against Westminster. Uh, what's the BYU single game record for three-point percentage with a minimum of 10 attempts? The answer is coming up next. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Lizzie from The Food Nanny. 
Last year, I got my style checking from Mountain America and I absolutely love it. The rewards are amazing. And now my style checking has even more baked in benefits like telehealth, mobile phone protection, and exclusive discounts on dining and entertainment. So good. Get the only checking account you truly need at any Mountain America branch or macu.com. Insured by NCUA. Membership required based on eligibility. Terms and conditions apply. Okay, that's good. Whoa, whoa, Dave! Sorry, I'll go grab some paper towels. You can't let Dave pour things. He works at JCW's. They fill stuff up past the brim over there, like their milkshakes. They're thick, rich, and oh my gosh. Delicious. Oh no. Dave's filling up Crystal's car for her. Dave, stop. Hey, this is Clark for JCW. Stop into any of our five locations today. We're located in American Fork, Thanksgiving Point, Provo, South Jordan, and our new location in Harriman. Come in and see why at JCW's we believe in quality and a lot of it. From business matters to family matters, from legal advice to litigation, Fillmore Spencer is your full-service law firm headquartered just a mile north of the Marriott Center on University Avenue with branch offices in Salt Lake and St. George. Top-rated lawyers consistently voted Utah Valley's favorite law firm. With its broad legal expertise, Fillmore Spencer can play offense or defense and even provide a little coaching. Fillmore Spencer, solving problems and seizing opportunities for you, your family, and your business. I'm a professional mom, and I mean business. Between helping the kids with school, coaching the soccer team, and everything else, I don't have time to mess around. Pro tip, BYU food to go. They've got everything from Kahlua pork, classic side dishes, to elegant desserts. Whether it's a wedding reception, family reunion, tailgating party, or a hungry ward, they've got you covered. Simply order, pick up, and serve. BYU Food To Go will help you put together an amazing event that everyone will enjoy. Check out BYU Food To Go. All right, uh, trivia time here on the BYU Basketball with Mark Pope. Uh, Cougars hit their new single game three-point record last night against Westminster, 19 threes, 19 of 40. That's one kind of record. What's the BYU single game percentage record, though? The th- percentage record for threes with a minimum of 10 attempts. And the answer here is 83.3%, a 10 of 12 outing against Texas in Kansas City wow. in November of 2013. Remember that one, Coach? Yes. Yes, I do, actually, really, really, really well. And the game winner is a Tyler Haas baseline jumper on the right baseline to beat Texas. That was a lot of fun. All right, hey, we mentioned it at the start of the show. Let's go back to last night and what it looked like when the coach tried to wrap up things in the locker room, but there was some business to take care of. All right, bring it in. Come on, guys. Hey, no, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. Honestly, we can't do that again. Yeah, wait. We can't do that again because you only win 150 games once, man. All right. That's a good time. The boys recognizing your 150th win. Wow. Did you know that he was on the verge of 150? No, I didn't know. That was a lot of work. I didn't know that either. Well, celebrations are always good, and uh, it was one last night. We hope there are many more to come. All right, well, I guess that's going to do it. Foose, uh, thanks for coming back, and we'll do this again with you. Yeah, for sure. Thank you so much. More, more, more uh, exploits of, uh, of Foose and uh, water sports, uh, <laughs> whether it's fishing or water slides yeah. or, yeah. Uh, Foose, thank you. Coach, awesome. <laughs> appreciate the balloons and the cookies, and we all appreciate the cookies. Thanks. Have a great week. All right, for producer Hamlin, for Foose and Mark Pope, I'm Greg Bubel. Go Cougs. Have a good night. Mother, father, thank you for taking the time to meet with me here at the kitchen table. We as a team need to take my high school education to the next level. I have been made aware of a new opportunity with greater flexibility and a wider range of class offerings. I'm speaking, of course, of BYU Online High School. Earn a real high school diploma with BYU Online High School, bringing education home. I was also hoping I could get a corner office overlooking the back patio and trampoline. Find out more at highschool.byu.edu. This holiday, whether you're roasting a Smith's Simple Truth Turkey for 40 or making a Murray's Baked Brie for two, whether you're baking a pie with fresh cosmic crisp apples like Grandma's or ordering private selection cream pies when Grandma's pie is all gone, Smith's has fast, fresh delivery and free pickup so you can make holiday meals that bring you all together to create memories that last. Smith's, fresh for everyone. Free pickup on orders of $35 or more. Restrictions may apply. 
Greg Rubel here for Tucano's Brazilian Grill. Are you craving Shuhasco dining featuring flame grilled, skewered meats, sliced, sizzling table side with grilled vegetables and pineapple? Or maybe you're missing Tucano's festival of gourmet salads and hot sides, rich decadent desserts, and famous fresh squeezed Brazilian lemonade. Well, the grills are fired up and it's all available for dine in or take out today. So get fired up for Tucano's Brazilian Grill, a proud sponsor of BYU Athletics for over 20 years. Call 801 224 4774 for reservations or order online at Tucano's.com. Hey Cougar fans, it's Taysom Hill. Football's a tough sport, but what's tougher is trying to find movies and shows nowadays that aren't full of profanity, sexual content, or graphic violence. That's why I'm glad I found VidAngel. With VidAngel, you can skip offensive content in the shows you stream from Netflix, Amazon Video, Apple TV Plus, and more. Now that's something to rise and shout about. So score a touchdown with your family and learn more at VidAngel.com. VidAngel. Watch more, worry less.